Welcome to Lesson 1E, Speed of Sound and Mach Number. In this lesson, we'll define speed of sound and Mach Number, and I'll discuss various flow regimes based on Mach Number, and I'll do an example problem. First, a quick review of the TDS equations, and we're restricting our discussion to ideal gases. These equations apply only to ideal gases. Here we have the first and second TDS equations with an alternate version of the first one. And I use the I here to indicate that these are for ideal gases. If we set S2 equal to S1, in other words, isentropic, and do a little bit of algebra, we get these two equations for the density ratio and the pressure ratio in terms of temperature ratio. And gamma, of course, is the ratio of specific heats. Now let's discuss the speed of sound. We'll use lowercase a for the speed of sound. I caution you that some books use c instead of a. For example, my fluid mechanics book. But this is more common among those who study compressible flows. I also note that we'll use capital M for Mach number, where some books use ma. This is the notation we use in our fluid mechanics textbook. But we'll use capital M for Mach number here. The fundamental definition of speed of sound is that A is the square root of del P del rho at constant entropy. In other words, how does pressure change with density when the flow is isentropic? You can think of speed of sound as a measure of the incompressibility of a fluid. In other words, a small a implies that small delta P can lead to a large delta rho. This case would be highly compressible. A large A is the opposite, namely a large delta P is needed to get a small change of density, which is highly incompressible. The limit as A goes to infinity is what we call an incompressible fluid. Consider water, for example. You could have a huge delta P trying to compress water in a tank, for example, with a piston, but delta rho will be very small hardly even measurable. Now let's consider the speed of sound for an ideal gas. It turns out that A is the square root of gamma RT. And I comment that you must use absolute temperature. In other words, Kelvin instead of degrees C in SI units. For example, let's take air at 25 degrees C. We can calculate the speed of sound. For air, gamma is 1.40. Specific gas constant is 0.2870 kilojoule per kilogram K. And then T would be 25 plus 273.15 to convert to Kelvin. And we'll need some unity conversion factors, namely a kilonewton meter is a kilojoule, canceling out kilojoules. Note that Ks cancel out here. And there's 1,000 kilogram meter per second squared kilonewton. This gets rid of kilogram and kilonewtons, and we end up with meters squared over second squared, but a square root over the whole thing gives us meters per second, which is what we want for a speed. So to three digits, I get A is 346 meters per second. I'll comment that here we used R air as 0.2870 kilojoule per kilogram K, but it's usually more convenient to use R air equal 287.0 joule per kilogram K. That would let us avoid this factor of a thousand in our unity conversions. Even more convenient is R air is 287.0 meter squared per second squared K. That allows us to redo this problem without any unity conversion factors. A equals square root of gamma RT equals square root of 1.40, 287.0 meter squared per second squared K, and then temperature in K was 298.15 K, leaving us with meter squared per second squared right away, and of course the same answer that we got previously. A is 346 meters per second. Sir, how did you get those units for R? Well, Boris, I'll show you. If we start with these units for R, joule per kilogram K, and we apply some unity conversion factors. A newton meter is a joule, getting rid of joules. A kilogram meter per second squared is a newton, from Newton's second law, getting rid of newtons and kilograms. 
This becomes meters squared per second squared k, which are the units I used up here. That's lovely. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Boris. Now let's define Mach number. It's a non-dimensional parameter, again using the symbol capital M. The dimensions are 1, and the units are 1 or no units. We define Mach number as speed over speed of sound. It's the ratio of the actual speed of the gas to the speed of sound. It turns out that Mach number is the most important parameter for our study of compressible flow. When we studied incompressible flow, Reynolds number was the most important parameter, but here Mach number will appear in almost all our equations. As a side comment here, don't confuse capital M Mach number with the same letter capital M that we use for molecular weight. Now let's discuss the flow regimes based on Mach number. If Mach number is less than about 0.3, we say that the flow is nearly incompressible. You can approximate it as incompressible without much loss of accuracy. When you're around Mach number of 0.3, the error is less than 5%, typically. When Mach number is less than 1, we call the flow subsonic. When Mach number is near 1, we call it transonic. Typically, this means that parts of the flow are subsonic and other parts of the flow are supersonic. When m is equal to 1, this is called sonic flow. And when m is greater than 1, this is called supersonic flow, which means the flow is faster than the speed of sound. When Mach number is real high, like greater than 5, we call that hypersonic flow. One of my former colleagues here at Penn State, Professor Gary Settles, who's now retired, is also an amateur artist, and he drew this sketch showing the spectrum of compressible flow due to Mach number. Cars traveling at highway speeds are incompressible flow, as are light aircraft like a Piper Cub. Subsonic flows would be, for example, the bullet train. Transonic would be big airplanes like the 747. And then supersonic flow would be, for example, high-powered bullets and supersonic aircraft like the old Concorde, which is now retired. When you get to Mach numbers around 5, the SR-71 is an example of a high-speed supersonic flow approaching hypersonic. And some test aircraft and missiles can go hypersonic. There's also a term hypervelocity. For example, meteors coming into the atmosphere where the Mach number can exceed 20. Let's do an example problem. An aircraft flies at high altitude where the pressure is only about 30 kPa and the density of the air is less than half of normal, about 0.458 kilogram per meter cubed. Let's calculate how fast, in meters per second, that the aircraft can fly to stay within the incompressible approximation, namely Mach number less than 0.3. We'll assume that the air is an ideal gas. These are our equations that we'll need speed of sound, Mach number, ratio of specific heats for air, and R for air in our convenient units. Let's work on some of these equations. We need the temperature to get the speed of sound, so we'll have to also use the ideal gas law, namely P equal rho RT, from which T equal P over rho R. Now that we have temperature, since A equals square root of gamma RT, and Mach number is V over A, we can solve for V, V equal Mach number times A, equal Mach number times square root of gamma RT. But let's use this equation for temperature. So speed V is Mach number times square root of gamma R P over rho R, or V equal capital M square root of gamma P over rho, since the R's cancel out in this equation. This is my answer in variable form. And when I plug in the numbers, I set the Mach number to 0 0.3 since that's our approximate incompressible limit. So V equals 0 0.3 square root of gamma 1.40. The pressure was given, which I write in Newton per meter squared or Pascals instead of kPa. The density was given and we need one unity conversion factor, our common one kilogram meter per second squared Newton, which gives me 90.984 meters per second, which we can write to three digits for our final answer. 
v is 91.0 meters per second. If the speed is anywhere above this, the incompressible approximation would start to yield significant errors. I also want to point out one thing here. Although we know R error, R actually dropped out in our final equation. So this answer is independent of R, although it does depend on gamma. And it depends on R indirectly through the ideal gas law. But if I had given this problem with a different gas other than air and gave you gamma but did not give you R, Many students would be stuck at this point, not being able to calculate the speed of sound. But if you stay in variables, you realize that R cancels, and you don't really need this piece of information anyway. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.